Hello folks, this is Joe again. Today, I'm going to be talking about my Dell PowerEdge 1950 and what I like to use it for. Give you a quick little tour around the box here. The stand I actually have, it's a stand slash cart, is one I got from work. And it just happens to be just about the 19 inch standard. I believe it is actually 19 and 3 quarters to 20 inches wide. But guess what? It fits server boxes just perfectly. So give me just a second, let me open it up and I'll show you what it all has in it. Okay, now that I have the server box turned off. quick view of the front have two hot swap bays right here there we go two hot swap bays a VGA port USB ports display so you know which box you're working on you have a whole entire rack of these boxes this one will tell you what box this is what operating system you're running and basically scrolls right to left your button right here, I believe, is for an indicator light on the back. So whenever you're working on these, you press this, and if you go around the back, you can tell which box you're actually working on. Instead of counting down the whole entire rack, one, two, three, four, five, six, it's the seventh one on the rack. Uh, power button right here, uh, DVD drive. These are usually like slim drives from like laptops and such. Um, pull out one of the hot swap bays real quick. This is a 146 gigabyte SAS drive, 15,000 RPM. These are actually not very hard to find on eBay, surprisingly. Okay, that's in. All right, give me just a second. We'll start working our way towards the inside case. All right, now we're gonna pull the case top off here. piece comes up, the whole entire system's top comes off. I know how to do this, I just did it. And we have the inside guts. Hello ladies and gentlemen. Right now, show you real quick. Right now you can see the little orange light back there going absolutely crazy. It's telling you that there's that the lid has actually come off, and there is actually, I believe, a trigger switch right here, and that lets the motherboard know, hey, the, the top's off, ramp the fans up. So that's basically what happens. Um, give me just a second, let me uh, actually turn the power off to this, and so I can pull things apart. Give me just two seconds. Okay, we're back now. Now that we have the power turned off, I'll give you guys a quick little preview of everything. Right up here is your controller for your uh, hard drive slots. You have eight fans, and believe me, this is, this is exactly why this machine is so loud. You have eight of these, I believe, 35 or 40 millimeter fans. These are little tiny things, but they make a hell of a noise. They really do. Uh, but basically, these things are all hot swap. You just pull them out like this. You can pull out the whole entire box. So I'll put that back inside there because I really don't want to mess with these things. They're hard to get in and out. Um, this whole plate comes off right here. Uh, show you that just real quick here. So I'm going to do this fairly easily. I don't know if I can or not. It's actually very, very tricky to get these things off. Very tricky. I'm not supposed to take them off. That's in there. There's one that really here that's really really bad. There we go. And there's the inside guts. 
Now, as you can plainly tell, I still have an open slot right here. Um, this is a 5430, an Intel Xeon E5430 quad-core processor. I believe 2.8 gigahertz. Um, this right here is my USB uh, 2.0 port. It's actually, this is really cool. This is embedded. Uh, usually there's, I believe Dell actually sells a uh, internal hard drive here where you can actually put this in here and use it as a much bigger hard drive so you can run possibly you know a Windows server on just this little box right here I don't know don't quote me on that I'm just not guessing but I have information about it <laughs> uh, right here you see all of our memory uh, I just got another 8 gigabytes so right now I have 16 gigabytes total of fully buffered DDR2 RAM so this is the ECC RAM it's really not the greatest stuff in the world. It's only 5300 uh, style or 5300 50, series DDR2 RAM, so it's only running uh, 667 megahertz. So it's not running super fast. Um, you have two expansion ports back here in the back. I believe these are X8 PCIe X8, so you can run your own um, SAS controllers and uh, hard drive controllers. I would suspect you could probably put like embedded um, solid state drives, which would be a dream of mine, but hell, I don't have that much money. Um, yeah, this is basically what was brand new in 2007, 2008, 2009. This is nothing brand new and special. This isn't the brand new 18 core processor with, you know, 128 gigs of RAM. This is just something very, very basic. Um, have two power supplies, two redundant power supplies. I believe 670 a piece. So those are really, really, really powerful power supplies just for a single processor. But to run all the fans, the controller for the um, hard drives, this and that's and others. There, there's need for that that much power. So, okay, let's put everything back together, and I will show you guys the back end of the server. All right, here we're on the back side of the server rack. It's the back side here. Excuse the shaky hands. This is a little rough to get back here. Let's pull back a little bit. Right here we have two power supplies. We have our ILO, I believe. I'm not too sure if that's ILO or if that's what exactly that is. Uh, if somebody wants to leave in the comments, you're more than welcome to. We have two gigabit ports right here. We have two USBs. The VGA, serial. And if you have the D-Rack, if you have like the D-Rack card or whatever it's called, I'm not too sure on this particularly what it's called, but there's the port right there for the, um, for the integrated uh, D-Rack for the Intel, or not Intel, the Dell D-Rack. So that is the inside in these cases. Oh, the trigger switch right here I was telling you about. That that basically tells the uh, the main board, hey, uh, the cap's off. Turn the fans way on. Or very, very, very on. Let's put it like that. Absolutely scared the crap out of me whenever it did it too. So, all right. Let's put the lid back on, and I'll show you guys what exactly this thing does. All right, now we're officially plugged back in. We're gonna power this bad boy on. And I will warn you, I'm not exactly sure how loud this is gonna be on camera, but it's pretty loud in life. Like I said, you have six, excuse me, eight fans inside there that are all pulling air at a tremendous rate. And it basically cycles these fans through a whole cycle of RPMs. I'll restart here in a second. We'll take a look at the monitor and see what the monitor does. She's nowhere near as noisy as a whole entire server farm, but she is quite a noisy. 
girl. Nowhere near as noisy as my Dell CS24 down there. This one right here has some serious noise to it. Just till starting up, give us just a second. We'll move right onto the screen. She's still ramping down a little bit. We're going to swap over here in just a second to the monitor. Right now I have my operating system running, or starting up I should say. And that's about her usual decimal right there. I believe, oh there we go. She did get a little quieter. Okay. Right now, yes I do have ESXi running. And I love it to death. As you can plainly tell, we can get the camera focused in here. There we go. I have 16 gigabytes of RAM, an Intel Xeon CPU E5430 at 2.66 gigahertz. So it's not 2.8, it's 2.66. Okay. And now she's calmed down just a little bit. Like I said, I have the LCD screen set to something very specific. Let's see if we can zoom in there real quick and see what it says. There we go. Eh, I can't see it very well. But. Okay, let's go through and look at ESXi real quick on this machine. Okay, folks, here we are at the system configuration screen of ESXi 5.5. We have the Configure Password, Configure Management Network, Restart Management Network, Test Management Network, Network Restore Options, Configure Keyboard Options, Troubleshooting Options, View System Logs, View Support Information, Reset System Configuration. So we'll get out of there. Down here at the bottom, you have your restart and shutdown options down here. You hit F12 to get into those. I won't do that right now because there's no need. Right here is where you go for the options to set up your vSphere client. The very first time you actually want to set this up and get your vSphere client, you will go to this page right here or this IP address in your web browser you click on that you go through and you click on the link inside the web page and it will automatically download your vSphere client and then you can configure everything for your uh, virtualization in the actual vSphere client you do not actually do anything with this ESXi software other than configure it from here you cannot actually configure your uh, your data stores, anything like that. Anything of your memory usage, processor usage, anything. You cannot do anything with this other than the management side. So, I'm going to show you guys here just uh, probably in the next video. I think this is going to be a good wrapping up point for today. Um, on my next video, I will show you guys the, the awesomeness of the actual vSphere client and what it actually can do and what what ESXi and VMware can really do for you uh, just for the home base user not for a corporate user which I mean I'm not a corporate user at all I am the home user home lab user just trying it out just seeing what I can do it can do a lot you can have several virtual machines running all kinds of little programs in those uh, operating systems running it's it's really great stuff so give me a another I don't know another week or so and we'll get into the vSphere client I might be posting some gameplay footage of some Team Fortress 2 as well on my channel so look for that in the next couple of uh, days uh, like I said next week I'll have something a little more along the lines of the vSphere client and how it actually works so until then guys take it easy and have a great week